Hey guys, welcome back to Turn Back the Clock. Episode, what number, Adam? I think it's 14. I think it's 14. That's I'll take it by that. Um, this is where we just talk about things relevant to the hobby. Um, tonight, we're going to have a guest on, as you can see, Ray from Philly. Ray, how's it going? Hi, how you doing, Dylan? How you doing, Adam? Great. Very good. So stoked to have Ray here. Um, we're going to talk about the Baseball Card Hall of Fame. That's why we have Ray on and how you guys can vote. And then we're going to do a PSA reveal that I sent 12 cards to, to Adam about four months ago, and they finally came back. And then we're going to do a little talk about the National. We're going to keep this around 30, 45 minutes. But first and foremost, this is a big deal to have Ray from Philly on this show. He's a legend. Um, he's one of my favorite guys on YouTube. He's one of my favorite channels to watch. Uh, he's been collecting baseball cards for a long time. And most importantly, everybody out there, he is in charge of the Baseball Card Hall of Fame. Um, I'm going to send this over to Ray to have him explain to everyone how to get involved. Because last year, for me, the first time I voted, it was a treasure for me. It really mm -hmm. meant the world to me to have a vote count towards cards that are going to the Baseball Card Hall of Fame. So, Ray, why don't you tell everybody about mm -hmm. yourself um, and and just everything about the Baseball Card Hall of Fame and how they can vote? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks, guys, for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure. And um, this is the sixth year that I've been doing the Baseball Card Hall of Fame. Uh, I did it by myself the first three years, and how it was done back then was – Anybody can vote for any card they wanted to. So the first year, I must have got 100 different cards. Second year, 150. Third year, 200. And it was uh, it was just overwhelming. So uh, I brought in two fellow YouTubers, Victor, the rookie card specialist, and uh, Mike, this baseball card life. And we basically just formed a committee quite similar to the regular Baseball Hall of Fame, such as the Veterans Committee or the Errors Committee. And instead of having anyone just vote for any card they wanted, we created a ballot and it's 40 cards per year on the ballot. You can vote up to 10 cards and those 10 cards then that get in the top 10 that are the votes that get in. Now the ballot is down to 30. The bottom five cards get bumped off. So now it's 25. So that means every year, 15 new cards get put into the ballot. We take everyone's suggestions. Uh, as everyone's voting, they can make a comment to say, hey, uh, I like to say maybe this card on the ballot next year. We definitely look at that and take that into consideration when we rotate 15 new cards each year. Um, it's a lot of fun. The, the main objective, uh, I mean, the, we have one unified YouTube channel and Facebook page, and it's called the Sports Card Hall of Fame Network, uh, where they can go watch the video of we released last weekend and in the video we'll have the link down below which you're sharing thank you <laughs> and yep. they just go in they click on the link on the bottom of that video and 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 then vote and what we like about it is that there's pictures on their car of the cards the front and the back um our motto is as uh, you know ho preserving hobby excellence which is what we want to do and it's also teaching people about cards that they might have not have known about uh, the first two years ballots were pretty easy it was like the trist speaker the 51 bowman man all the 52 tops mantle but as the years have gone on now it's getting a lot tougher and tougher and there's a lot more cards that i'm sure people don't didn't even know about uh such as the 51 tola Taros josh gibson card and there's so many other cards that are great cards now some of the people ask us the question well what what makes a card go into the baseball card hall of fame and there's many factors into that there's uh, i like i like to use this word the iconicness of the card the beauty of the card the rarity of the card the value of the card um the popularity of the card it doesn't necessarily have to be a rookie card it doesn't have to be a card of a player that's in the hall of fame uh, for example, we have the 89 Fleer Billy Ripken error card. That card, to me, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. It's a very popular card. People voted for it and it got in. Uh, there's the Thurman Munson 71 Tops, the second year. Beautiful card. That, to me, is an iconic card. And people voted on that in. Now, us as a committee, we don't vote. 
Uh, we create the ballot. We ask people to vote. So we don't have a say in it. We have no persuasiveness whatsoever. Uh, so it's it's whatever people want to vote for. Uh, but the point I was just trying to make was it's not just necessarily a rookie card or a player of a Hall of Famer. Uh, it could be a, it, it's about the card. And it's uh, also teaching people to learn about the history of that card. Uh, there's so many people that have already messaged me. I, I never knew about that card. Now they're looking into that card. And maybe some people are buying that card, you know, for their collection, whatever. But I, I, I came upon this idea about six years ago, 2018. And I always wondered, you know, I wonder why the actual Baseball Hall of Fame doesn't have baseball cards in the Hall of Fame, like a wing. Which since then, I think they do now. Uh, but back then, they, they didn't. And I felt like creating my own baseball card Hall of Fame and have the viewer, the people, the YouTubers out there have a voice. And that's what this is really all about. You have a voice in this. You pick these cards uh, based on a lot of factors, the rarity, the value, popularity, <laughs> iconicness, you know, whatever. Uh, the player's great career. And there you have it. And it's uh, it's growing. We're, we're enjoying it. We're having a lot of fun. We've expanded it now to the Football Card Hall of Fame back in January. We have two new committee members that are running that. Uh, next up, we want to add, like add the Basketball Card Hall of Fame and the Hockey Card Hall of Fame. So we're going to try and run the gamble with all four sports. But myself, Victor, and Mike run the Baseball Card Hall of Fame, and it's just been a blast so far. That's awesome. Well, dude, so anybody out there listening or watching to this, if, if you've been collecting cards – for any considerable amount of time, this is a, a really important thing to get, get involved and have your say. Like I have a favorite card of all time and everyone knows it's the 1975 Robin Young card. It's yet to make the ballot, but I'm a, one of these days going to make the ballot. But I, I love, I love having a say and it's so awesome that Ray and everybody else involved is putting their time in this and, for a collector who, like me, who was just in oblivion by themselves, knowing that they can take part in this, and one day they'll probably be like a book with all of the Hall of Fame, and there's a website and everything, just just cool stuff. It's it's important, mm -hmm. and I think everyone should click on the link and and vote for your favorite choices. So you have a say. It's not like voting, you know. It, it's it's fun voting. It's exciting. right. It's fun voting. That's exactly right. And we we saw the comment for the Yelp. And we've already put it on for next year's ballot. So you're, you're in. So don't worry about it. But we take everyone's considerations. Like we, when people vote, they'll make leave a comment. And we have a spreadsheet already listed for next year's ballot. So, yeah, that'll be on. <laughs> Ray, awesome. I, I, I voted last year for the first time. I think it was, were you on Dr. Beckett's podcast talking about this? Yes. That's, yes. that's where I heard it. Channel too. So we did both. And he's a great guy. Oh yeah, I, I heard it on there, and then I I went and voted. Um, is there a, you you do a, you said you had a website? What's the website where we can see what cards are in the Hall of Fame already? Well, it's it's not a website. It's uh, we're on the uh, YouTube uh, channel, Sports Card Hall of Fame Network, and on Facebook uh, to look up Sports Card Hall of Fame Network. And uh, there's links in the uh, YouTube channel where uh, Mike, uh, the Baseball Card Life, has created. All the ballots for each year from the, the, the guys that the cards have gotten in, in 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Because a lot of people ask, well, how do I know who's already gotten in? In, in the channel, there should be a, a link down uh, below the main topic of the channel. And then it opens up the spreadsheet and sees all the previous history of all the years. And um, then, of course, this year's ballot as well. And it's, uh, yeah. It should well, be, I think know. I can help. I think I can help because if you're if you're down for it, I would. I think it would be cool to have a web page. This is what I do for work: websites and mm -hmm. so forth. So if you'd ever want a web page or or whatever where we could easily list and show pictures of all the cards in there, I think yeah. that would be pretty cool. Just we just to we were talking about this last summer uh, about creating a, a website and having a. I, I've had images of this website where it's literally like doors opening into a hall. Ooh. And then you walk in and how you see the plaques in the real Hall of Fame, you see the cards. You can click on each door and it could be 2018 and that door opens and then you see the cards in that room. And then click on 19, the doors open. 
the cards for that room. I have this image from about a year and a half ago for a website. So yeah, I will talk to you. <laughs> we will definitely talk to you about that. All right, cool. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. The YouTube YouTube Hall of Fame for sports cards has a website that I helped with. So mm -hmm. which you're a part of. So I figure like, why yeah. shouldn't the baseball card Hall of Fame too? Absolutely. I've had a dream about that for over a year. I have this image of how I would love for it to portray and my two partners, Mike and Vic, will be thrilled. All right. <laughs> so that would be great. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, why don't you talk that the book um, that you always talk about the 300 greatest cards of Mike, Mike Payne, right? Yes. I'm, I feel like there's going to be a lot of collectors like me who you're going to inspire with the hall of fame. Like forget Mike's book. I'm going to be like, I want all the cards in the hall of fame. Yeah. <laughs> like that's going to be special for me right. to like go through and be able to check off certain cards. That's, and that's, that's how I'm true. voting too. A lot of cards that I have, yeah. I like, that means something to me. That's a dream for me too. I've been talking about that for a couple of years. Um, I don't know if I want to wait for a couple more years to have 10 ballots all together to do it. I don't know yet, but that's something that's uh, I, I would love to do. Absolutely. Awesome. So I, I know you guys aren't voting yourself and I can understand that um, in, in that terms, but so you know, and I'm okay with saying this, I'm giving one of my votes for the Mike Schmidt rookie. Yeah. It needs to get in there. I mean, he's the greatest third baseman ever to play the game. Let's get Mike Schmidt's card in the Hall of Fame. So the checks uh, in the mail, Dylan. No. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, I don't know. There's some tough ones in there this year. There's a lot of good cards. There's a lot of tough ones. Like like I said last night to my partners, I was like, you know, the first two years were really easy, you know. Wagner mantles and stuff like that, Aaron Clemente. But now, when you got to the third, fourth, fifth, and now we're in the sixth year, all those, um, I like to say, obvious ones are already in. Now we're looking at people are saying, wow, there's a lot more great cards out there that, yeah. you know, we're not even aware of. So, yeah, the Schmidt card, it, it's, it, I was always, you know, the people have come up to me and asked me, Dude, why isn't the T206 Eddie Plank card in there? I'm like, I have no control over that. So, yeah. You know, vote. You know, it's all I could tell you. I mean, I remember that card when I was a kid growing up. That was the Mount, that was one of the Mount Rushmore cards. It was the T206 Wagner, the Napoleon Lajoie 33 Gaudi, uh, 52 Tufts Mantle, and the Eddie Plank. But and that was, I have magazines from the late eight, early 80s that shows those four cards were like the biggest card in the hobby. Since then, only two of those are still in that Mount Rushmore, the Wagner and the Mantle. And I think the two have been replaced. I was a Hank Aaron rookie, and I can't remember. I think maybe the, the Babe Ruth Sporting News card or something like that. But uh, that plank was huge. And, um, yeah, that's, I mean, with six year, and that's still not on the ballot yet in the, in the Hall of Fame yet. So it just goes to show you how many great cards are out there. Yeah, I mean, my votes are like – Exactly like you talked about, my votes are are all pushed towards the cards that I grew up seeing on mm -hmm. magazines and my album covers as a mm -hmm. child, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's where all my votes are heading. Right. I'm wondering, my question is, you have a decent amount of modern stuff, I would consider, like the Ichiro Pujols combo card. Love that card. Are, you, are they, I, I know you, maybe you guys don't have a perfect system yet for the future. I know some have to have a just like the hall of fame a certain amount of votes to stay right. on um like for me i'm not gonna vote for the newer stuff like that mm -hmm. yet because i feel like their time is gonna come in the future are those gonna have a chance to be on in the future if they don't get voted in now well we were it's funny we were talking about that last night i mean as far as like there's only two cards from the 90s in there the 90 score bo jackson the 93 sp jeter and then after that, there's only one card in the 2000s, and that's the 2011 Tops Update Mike Trail. So we were discussing this last night, and it's it's we're we're all open to suggestions to adding. Uh, I'm sure in a few more years, people are going to ask about a Shohei card. the 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 situation is though, what card do you pick? Because yeah. with all the cards out there today, you know, you know, back in the 80s, there was three rookie cards per year, and then in the 90s, maybe seven or eight. But now you know, Shohei could have 200 different cards and it's going to be, you know, do we stick 
with a flagship card, like a Tops, Tops Update, Tops Chrome kind of thing? Or do we go with their most valuable, which like an autograph card? It, it's we're, we're definitely and eventually they're going to have to be added in as years go on. Uh, more cards from the 2000s and 2010s and so forth. So, yeah, they'll eventually get on. It's just going to be tough to try and figure out uh, which one because there's so many cards coming out each year. But, yeah, to answer your question, yeah, absolutely. There's going to be more uh, 2000s and 2010s at it. I mean, awesome. we're open for suggestions, definitely. Well, okay, so since we're kind of through with, like, understanding it, and I want everyone to go out and vote, Here's my question for bo both of you guys. Mm -hmm. Pick two cards from this list that you would want in the Hall of Fame. I know, Ray, you don't have a vote, so I hope you're okay with <laughs> saying. I mean, I know the, the Smith the Schmidt is going to be one, but it, if you have you have two choices, like these two, I could kind of guess Adams and Ray obviously won. Um, Adam, why don't you go first on your two top choices? All right. <clears throat> I'm going to – this is going to probably surprise you, but I I'm going to vote for the Roger Maris rookie. I'd like to see that one get in because Roger Maris isn't in the hall of fame, but it would be cool if his rookie card was in the baseball card hall of fame. So I, I would love to see that one get in. I, I think I'll, I'm going to vote for that one. And you know, the obvious one would have been the 53 Bowman mantle, but I'm going to say, I think, I think this 1988 Goodwins champions King Kelly should be in. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to say that one too. Beautiful card. Yeah. That's probably one of the most beautiful cards ever right there. Think about that. That's 1888 and look how beautiful that card is. Unbelievable. That's that's Orlando's card right there. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. like oh, I mean, I'm definitely giving that one a vote. Um, yeah. Orlando, uh, he should be out there like making videos on getting that thing in. Like I stamp <laughs> it in. All right, Ray, what would your two choices be? My first one's going to be the 1938 Heads Up Joe DiMaggio. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I know he has, I'm pretty sure he has the um, 39 uh, play ball, and he does. But, you know, a lot of people think that that's really his rookie card, the 39 play ball, and this is earlier. And it's a fun, it's a cool looking card. I love the colors in there, I love the imagery. Um, and then after that, I, I'm going to go with the, with what we talked about in the beginning, the Eddie Plank, the T206 Eddie Plank. I, I know people are like, no Schmidt. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm going with, I'm just looking at it from above. And uh, yeah, I would pick the Eddie Plank and the DiMaggio heads up. Well, I mean, those would have been my first two choices too. The Eddie Plank and the <laughs> DiMaggio, hands down, were one and two. But since... You guys already, since you picked those, I'm going to pick two more off the beaten path. And I'm going to go with the 1990, um, 1990 Leaf Frank Thomas, mm. because that has a real special place in my heart. Yep. And then I'm going to go with the 1991 Michael Jordan baseball card. That card's going crazy lately. It's going two crazy. Of, it, yeah, those two cards to me. Um, <laughs> as a kid growing up still to this day, really have a special place in my heart. Yeah. And that's a good point because back at that, in that era, it was the 89 upper deck Griffey and the 90 Lee Frank Thomas where I, I, I can't begin to tell you how many people were going nuts to chase those two cards, the grip, yeah. the Griffey and this, and the big hurt. So I mean, every, I remember opening up so many packs trying to get that Jordan yeah. and, it is just like you know, one per box. I remember they they, they basically came one per box. So yeah, um, I did open one, and I just sent one to PSA just this last week. One that I had as a kid, just to have it slapped. Right. And now that I see it on the Hall of Fame. I was like, yes. And then the Frank <laughs> the Frank Thomas Leaf was the very first card I ever sent to PSA to get graded. Part of my group. Right. So and when I had since a kid, that my dad gave me as a present the whole set when I was um, I guess ten or eleven years old. Sweet. So Sweet. That's awesome. Really cool. Ray, anything else um, or Adam, anything else you want to add about? No, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. This was a lot of fun. I mean, I could talk. I, the two favorite things that I love about baseball and everything is the Hall of Fame and cards. And this is both together. You know, <laughs> I'm in heaven when I talk about <laughs> Hall of Fame and baseball cards. This is like I could do this every day. But no, I appreciate it. You know, just make sure everyone could. Get out and vote. Um, there's only about two weeks left to vote. 
ends after the national. I know everyone's focused right now on the national, but when you come back, you know, there's still another week after that. So get out and vote. Like I said, you have a voice and it's time to be heard. Pick out your 10 great cards. Awesome. Uh, Adam, anything about this topic before we close it out? No, I, we're, we're going to put the uh, link to vote in the description of the video here. So yeah, get, get, get out there and vote. Like I said, I voted last year for the first time. Um, it's, there's some tough choices in this. I'm like, if I'm thinking right now, like, Ooh, you know, so I might have to wait. I think I might vote at the national. Maybe we could like vote together. You know, I know there's a lot of people that are getting together at the national that are going to do like this group vote. I'm like, do it. You know, yeah. I mean, you know how many times people have told me they picked their 10 and they're getting ready to hit submit. And they're like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did mine really fast. Is that and when you read them off during the stream, I, I knew I checked them off as I went and I came out with 10 at the end. I go, that's it. I'm sticking with it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so if and if anyone hasn't checked out Ray's channel, that will be also linked to the description. Check out Ray's personal channel. He has an awesome collection and the way he collects is really unique and special. Um, so thank you, Ray. Thanks for being yeah, here. Man. For coming on, man. Super. Thanks, special, guys. Right? I really appreciate it. Have a great night. You thank too. You. Talk to you thank soon. Bye. 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 All right. All right, guys. We are. Yeah. Get out there and vote. We we're moving on. Um, that was just awesome. Um, next up on the agenda is something that I've been looking forward to for four months. And this is, has it been four months, three months? It, it, uh, it, let's see, I got the here. We, uh, let's see. Yeah. It's been at least three months, probably four months. Uh, so, oh, the submission date was February 25th. This was, if you remember, um, PSA had a vintage special $15 a card. I think it was like 10 card minimum. So Dylan, you, I only have one card in this order. You have the other 11. We have 12 total. Um, so just got to got them back here in the last couple weeks. Uh, so yeah, it was there for a while. I, I think those those specials they take a little longer, which I understand. But we got them back here, so we can. Yeah, because I had a, I had a PSA order that I paid full price for, and I got them back within the yeah. thirty day time frame. Right. Um. So with that said, I'm really excited because like you know you send your cards to go get graded, and you're like, I want these back for my collection. Some of these cards, I'm literally going to be selling them at the national or trading them. Um. But I have what I thought the grades were back when I graded them. Um, some are years and years ago I graded them. So they might be way off. I'm not going to, I'm just going to go off what I have here. So Adam, as you, before you show the card, tell me the card and I'll look for what I thought they look for the, the sleeve. Okay. Do you, the, the first one I got here is 1961 tops. Willie McCovey, number 517. Okay. Yeah. I got it right here. Okay. So the Willie McCovey, I had as a 5.5 coming back. And I think this one's going to be in my collection. So what do we got? All right. This is a beautiful example here. And you're already overachieving. It got a 6. Yeah, I think 6. PSA 6. A 6. All right. Look at that thing. Look how nice that looks. Perfect. Perfectly centered there, right to left. Wow, that's sick. Oh, man, so stoked. Yeah, that one's going in the collection. All right, good. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm a plus 0.5 right now. That's right. All right, All right, give me the, the next, next one, one. The next one we have a 1959 tops Stand the Man Musial number 150. All right, this one I'm going to be trading or selling. I know it's off centered. And hold on, let me uh, take you off solo mode. So this one was, I'm saying it's going to be a four. What do we got? Four. Right on. Nailed Everyone, it. I mean, look, I'm not going to get too cocky yet. <laughs> um, everyone thinks PSA is so hard and so ridiculous. I, I, you know, I looked at my cards and then, and so far I'm doing pretty good. So let's see if we can keep this up. Dude, that's All right, awesome. Number three. Four. All right. Number three is 1964 tops NL home run leaders. Great card. Number nine. What All right. That, what that, that one, that one, I had it graded as a five. Okay. We got down a point here we got a four four all right so i'm negative 0.5 so far overall okay love that card four player combo card all right the next one 1962 what a card this is 1962 tops garrigan ruth green tint 
Number yeah, this one, one, this one, I think I overgraded it when I originally graded it. My guess is going to be a 2.5. I put it as a three, but I think it's probably going to be a 2.5. It's a beautiful card. This is this card's right up my alley. The way it's a, it got a two, but I love cards like this. I don't, you know, where the corners are a little rounded there, but you got a greatly centered card there. Nice picture. So you got a two on this one. If I could have all my cards look like that, I would buy twos all day long. Me I mean, too. That, I, yeah. I, it's a, it, I'm, I, I've had that card for a long time and it's stunning looking and it's a two. There's no creases yeah. in it. It's just the rounded, perfectly rounded corners. All right. All right. So all right. Beautiful card here. Five on that. We got a 1958 Topps Gil Hodges, number 162. Okay. This one's very, I remember this card being very beautiful card. I put this one down as a five. Um, yeah. Let's see what we got. Four. Four. All right. Negative. I'm, I'm losing, losing track here. Great looking card though. Look beautiful at that. card. I mean, that's yep. full, full on in my collection right there. Had that card for so long. Four, beautiful. Awesome. Okay. All right. Next one. 1964 Tops Giant Gunners. May Cepeda, number 306. All right. This one I got as a four. Um, I remember this one was questionable for me. I feel like there might have been like a little wrinkle in it or something. But I think it's a good looking card, if I, my memory serves me. Four. Four. All right. Right on. Yeah. Good looking card. Oh, it was a dimple. I remember it has a dimple in it. Really, I thought it would great be like card. a seven if it didn't have that dimple. It's got Willie Mays on it. It's a great card. Yeah, beautiful <laughs> card. Super sick. So paid is good too. All right. The next one. Oh, near and dear to my heart here. 1968 yeah, Tops cool. game, Mickey Mantle, number two. All right, this one's cool. This, this one's got a crease in it, um, probably like a two. Um, and then it also, I, I remember buying this in a lot. It, it was probably like a $2 card. So wow. two. Give me a two. Two. Boom. There Number two, two. I mean, those cards are so cool because it looks like a 10. It looks like it, it doesn't matter. Those 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 rounded yeah. corners, those top game cards, there's Love no the reason back. to there's no reason to buy those in high grades. They all look exactly the same. Right. All right. Beautiful. Next one. Another awesome card from the same set. 1968 Tops game, Willie Mays, number eight. Wow. Uh, I don't have that in front of me. My memory serves me probably in the three to four range but i don't i don't five. remember you got a five. five. Oh, sick that was part of the lot i bought it's probably like a dollar that card way back so you're making oh, if you sell five. this card you're gonna make some money on this one that's awesome that one's keeper keeping that one both those Beautiful. the mantle on that one all right 1974 tops bob gibson number 350 okay oh this is cool so this one was an sgc um 7.5 that cracked in half um, I'm really, I really want to know what it, there was no creases in it. So let's see how PSA compared it. An old grade 7.5. Seven. Seven. Perfect. So an old SGC slab that I had for a hundred years and there we go. And it's seven. So they are really accurate. Yep. All right. Next one. <clears throat> Ooh, look, this is a great card. 1970 tops. Reggie Jackson. Love this one. Number this is one, one of my favorite Reggie cards of all time. Um, I've had this in my collection for quite some time. Uh, this one, I claimed it was going to be a five. Okay, it got a four. A four. All right, beautiful four, though. That's going in my collection. Decently centered. Um, yeah. Yeah, love that card. Four, uh, fours, fours are... <laughs> They're magic. The PSA fours like fours the old are awesome. five, you know? Yes. All right. And then we got... This is the, your last one, and my mine okay. is the next one. Uh, 1981 tops, George Brett. Okay. I, this is an, a really old one that I graded a long time ago. I didn't re really look through it. I had as in an eight knowing PSA, it's probably going to be way lower, but I want to see what it is. You nailed it. Eight. Awesome. Sick. That's, that's a great card too. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So all you right. got the eight on the all-star card. Right on. All right. Now. The, my card, I had one card, okay? I've had this card for a little while now, and I've just been kind of holding off on grading it, but it's not about the grade on this one. This, one for me, was just about getting it in a nice slab. Um, I got to credit uh, Dom, Staven Sports Cards, on this one. I did a three and three with Dom last year. It was a, a while back. And one of the cards that he showed during the three and three was a Willie Mays in the set. 
And by doing that, I discovered this set. I did not know about this set. Um, so, oh, I know big, what it is. I big, know what Mickey it is. Mantle collector. I uh, I went online and I found a, a raw copy of the mantle on this set. And I said, uh, I don't know if PSA will even grade this, but I'm going to send it in. Okay, before you show so, it, I want to guess. It's a scratch off. Yes, it is the okay. uh, uh, 1967 tops. Who am I? Number 22, Mickey Mantle, and. It got a, a one, which I, I was surprised it even got a grade. I, I thought it would either come back or they would give me a uh, authentic or whatever. But yeah. it got the one uh, awesome. because, you know, these cards, they were scratch off. So this is a card yeah. that was already scratched off by who knows who <laughs> and who knows when. Uh -huh. But this is a card I never knew it even existed until I talked with Dom on that three and three. And, um, yeah, it looks great in the slab. And it's a, you know, a card I can add to my registry for, for Mantle. And, uh just a cool card. Like it's That's just, awesome. I don't know. It's, it's an thank awesome you, card. Thank you, Dom. Saving thank you, Dom. sports. Yep. Super sick. So there we go. Now, should I, so I should bring your cards to the national? Yeah, or? bring them. Yeah, bring okay. them because there's only, you know, I'm going to, I think there's just a couple I'm going to trade out, but yeah, might as well just bring them. I got okay. plenty of room in my bag to bring them home. All right. Stoked, man. That was yep. super sick. 15 bucks a card. Pretty good deal on that. Pretty good deal. I, I'm really stoked on that. Um, I feel like I did really good. Anyone, everyone complains about PSA grades. I feel like I was within a point altogether, maybe off by two points total, but like, and I graded half of those, you know, years and years ago without like breaking up my scope and then I just left them, you know? So it, it's not that hard. You really just look at your cards and, and, and PSA is accurate. That's good. And just like SGC, they're both very accurate in my opinion. Just look at your cards. That's all there is to it. Under under magnification, that's the key. Under magnification. Look at them under mag magnification, yep. or at least in the right lighting. Yeah. Because you can hide the you know creases hide really easy. Um, By the way, here's the back of that mantle card. It's oh, the cool. back is sick. Cool looking back. That back is awesome. Who am I? That is sick. Is really it all, all Mickey Mantle? Oh yeah, I can see 18 home runs in the World Series. Yep. Uh, 1961, what MVP or? Oh no, he wasn't MVP. He was um. Uh, you just that was the home run. That was a home run race. Yeah, 54. Um, but yeah, just for me, it's like just to think like who scratched this off? You know, like yeah. what, some kid in the 60s or 70s or whatever. It's just just a he cool hit that he hit that thing hard like a lottery ticket. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to I tried to scratch the rest of it off when I when I got it raw and it just literally nothing. It was like set in okay. stone. Okay, that's <laughs> all right. So all right. you want to do a little? Let's do a little national talk for like five oh, minutes, yeah. five ten minutes, something like that. Yeah, yeah, national talk. All right, all right, guys. So anyone going to the nationals? Me and Adam will be there. Um, we are really excited, and I showed Adam earlier, and I'll show you guys. So if you guys see us at the national. Come up to us and come grab this epic card that my wife designed for us. 1951 Tops design. Um, my wife is amazing. Um, she created this card. So we have something to give out at the National. And then you can scan the back. And this will take you to my site. And this will take you to Adam's site. And the Turn Back to Plot episodes in particular. Um, really stoked to share this with Adam and to share this with everybody. That is so, so good. Uh, uh, here, here's here's going to be the issue though. Your wife is going to get flooded with requests yeah. requests now from you, people on YouTube. Like, can you do that? Because that is like a million times better than something tops you'd be able to get on the tops website. Yeah, I'm really, really stoked on this. I told her already because the size of it, they also come, we can get them with square corners and wait till you feel this thing. This is like, it's like better than a Topps card. And the next one will probably be like a 1951 Bowman design, I'm thinking, with the square. I told my roommate, Adam, um, Vintage Sanctuary, that maybe we'll do a combo card together, have my wife make it for next year's national. <laughs> so, nice. all right, let's do some national talk. Adam, what are your plans? What are your goals? Um, let's talk about it. Well, you know, so this... Like you, first national. Um, I'm getting in. I'm getting in Wednesday later on Wednesday. So uh, the hope is, you know, I can fly in and then, um, you know, hit hit some of the show on Wednesday night. And then obviously I'll I'll be there all day Thursday, all day Friday. Uh, then I head home Saturday. So Thursday and Friday are going to be my two full days there at the show. 
um, and obviously want to go to the uh, the get together on Thursday night for the YouTube content creators. Other than that, I don't have any plans. Uh, I don't really have. I got some cards I'm looking looking for, but this being my first really show, big show, let alone first national, I kind of just want to go and just take it in and not really have a lot of expectations other than just to meet people and um, maybe if I go in the future again next year or whatever. Having gone once, I'll probably be able to make better uh, a game plan and so forth. But this time, I just want to just go and experience it. And, um, you know, if I if I hit any of the cards on my list, great. If not, who cares for me? Like I, for this for me is just about like the experience and meeting people and um, the cards. Yeah, I'm going to be looking for some cards, but I don't expect to, you know, that I don't really that's not like way down my list as far as as far as how this experience is going to go. And um, I also want to mention John Newman invited you oh, and I yes. along with a, a couple other uh, Danny Black and um, uh, what's his first Sunday Friedman, right? Is a, he's an artist, incredible artist. So we're going to be on, uh, I guess, the main stage on Thursday at 11 o'clock for Sports Card Nation live episode. We're going to be up there again. I don't, I don't know what we're going to be doing or I guess he's going to be giving away some stuff. Uh, I'm going to probably give away some slabs, I figured. I'll bring some slabs I can give away if there's people there. Um, I have no idea what it's going to be like, but that sounds cool, man. We're going to be up on uh, whatever the main stage is and just talking. So that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, that I do. I'm so glad you mentioned that. I, I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the show. Dude, I'm like, I can you believe it? Our first national and we're going to be on the main stage. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's like, dude, I mean, this is such a cr incredible opportunity. Um really really awesome and he's having us as a team up there you know turn back the clock combo so that's going to be a special moment and hopefully one of us one of our friends can video us when we're up there which will be really cool and and anyone watching this who's go also going to the national yeah come and uh feel free yeah. to heckle us too if you're if you're there watching the whatever we're doing up there feel free to heckle us you know <laughs> yeah absolutely for sure ask us some funny questions yeah <laughs> um Dude, that's awesome. I kind of, I feel the same way. Um, I'm, I'm actually like, I'm a little like nervous about like, I, I, I get emotional when I get like really like excited about things and I'm not nervous about being on up on stage. I'm nervous about my first moment walking into the national and just like, I feel like it's going to like hit me like a, like a rock and just be like, Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get all like teary eyed and just like, I don't know, man. I, I have been looking forward to this. I, I can't say forever because I, I was by myself. I didn't even know, like, you know, I went to a national as a kid, but I, I didn't know it was a national. Um, since the last, I've been on YouTube for like a year and a half. Since the last year's national, I was so bummed that I didn't go. And I have been literally looking forward to this moment of being at the national since then and and it it is like going to be better than christmas morning as a kid uh, which is almost impossible to be in my own brain but this is gonna beat it the second i get on the airplane is the moment i'm gonna be like whew, just so fired up to hang out with my friends and i'm really excited to look at baseball cards i cannot wait to see what i find i have this list and I wrote some cards down, but I probably won't even pull up the list one single time. I, I'm i going to see what strikes me in the moment and go after it. And and I don't know if I'm going to buy. I have, I'm bringing a big arsenal of cards to trade and or sell. And I'm bringing an arsenal of some money that I saved through the year. And I might come home with something crazy. I was already thinking like maybe even a Mickey Mantle rookie card. Um, maybe I'll just bring home one card. I don't know, you know, in a, in a one, because I, I saw the price the other day of ones that is right in my wheelhouse. And I'm like, dude, I could come home with a Mickey Mantle rookie card. Probably won't, but who knows? I might blow my wand the very first minute I'm in the, in the show. That's what I'm scared about too. <laughs> well, it, it, because I've, I've never been to one of these shows, you know, I've, I've bought for decade a decade plus uh, just online ebay yep. auction houses all this stuff so who knows maybe i go to the show and there's all these cards that never come up online that are like i don't know i mean i've heard that you see cards that you don't see online at these shows 
Now, if, if that's the case, then yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be doing some buying because yeah, it, then then it will be hard not to because I don't know if I'll get another chance for a while to do to be at one of these things. So um, it's just gonna just yeah, see see what's out there. Um, yeah, like I said, I got I'm bringing some cards. I got I got some cards that uh, some modern cards that uh, are, are like double in price from when I first bought them. Believe it or not, I know most cards are not, but like I got like a Jokic rookie card. I bought two of his rookie cards a decent time back, and one of them's like doubled in price or more. So I'm gonna try to either trade or sell that one and put that towards uh, you know uh, either a Mickey Mantle card or a Tom Brady card that I've been chasing that I collect. So, um, you know, I'll be maybe making some trades or, or, or selling some cards too, giving some cards away that I'm bringing. So it's just going to be fun. You know, I, uh, I, yeah, really looking forward to, to seeing what's there. And I, I want to kind of, I was even thinking that maybe this would be a good opportunity, depending on how big the lines are, to get a card graded by like tag uh, or That's a CSG. Cool. You know, some of these other grading companies, I'm, I don't think I'm going to wait in a PSA line, but if these other grading companies that I kind of want to see their slabs like tag, um, I'd love to get a, a card graded by tag just to kind of test it out. Uh, maybe I'll even crack a PSA or something and see how the grade comes back in a tag tag yeah. uh, automated grade. You know, just so stuff tag, like that. Tag's going to be there. I haven't looked. Yeah, I mean, tag's going to be there. They're going to be grading cards. I, I think at the they're going to be showing you how the whole thing works, the AI grading. Oh, so sure. uh, I'm going to definitely want to check out a lot of being a graded card collector. I want to check out a lot of the graded the grading company. Um, setups and, and what they're doing there so for sure i'll be big focused on that too yeah i mean that's just uh, dude, that's all awesome. tag you're going to be blown away by the case on tags the, yeah the slab is is the greatest slab out there period um so yeah you're going to be psyched i i'm i'm even thinking i might be sitting at a at a dollar box for five hours next to uh dr beckett and just like <laughs> having the time of my life because I have an eBay store and they, and I, and I love getting inventory for the eBay store and it's fun to look through. And I'm bringing like you, I'm bringing a bunch of Otani cards to sell and or trade. And it's like sell these things while they're hot and get something that I really want. So and before we go, actually I was joking about it earlier because it was, it is funny. I already bought a card at the national. On, yes, uh, I forgot. What the, the the best and the biggest Tom Brady dealer in in the country? Who knows? Maybe in the world, the captain. He goes by the Captain Thirty Seven on Instagram. Uh, he does these like lives where he shows everything he's bringing to the national. And I watched it earlier today. And one of the cards, I'm not going to say what it is, is a card I've wanted for a while. And um, the price has come way down, way down. I mean, I'm talking. This card used to sell for like four thousand uh, bucks, and it's like less than it's like eight it was like 800 bucks or whatever that i got it for so wow. um it, i i lined it up with it i secured it already said I'll, I'll bring it and it's yours i'll pay him at the national on wednesday and <laughs> so i already bought a card i'm already dipping into the dude, dude i love that i mean that's the cool thing this national i'm glad we were going to this one and not the last one because last year all that stuff was in a bubble and just exploding and now we have uh of prices that we can afford and vintage is still up there but you know it is is like this is prime time to collect some modern stuff that has gotten you know just just crash so hard i know a lot of people think prices will never touch those prices again i'm more of a believer that there will be another bubble in the sports card market and i can see those things popping just as high if not higher that's how it works these days i mean there's a whole nother topic uh, and a whole nother show you're talking about, but I'm a guy that believes it, it just like the stock market, baseball cards move fast. It is not like it used to be, and bubbles will happen again, and they'll probably happen sooner than we think. So I, I tend to be like, dude, all these things crash. Now's the time to buy those things that you always wanted in this modern stuff. Um, so I'm not probably going to be buying much modern, but it it is it, it's awesome. It's just awesome. So, I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah, I can't wait. And if any of you guys are going to be there, please come up to us, talk to us. Love to meet you guys. Um, and next starting, I'm calling it next year. Like I'm basing my life off the national. So next year, which is in two weeks, we're going to be consistent again and do the turn back the clock every other week. Like we were doing it. We took a big break. We had some life things going on. Um, 
and we're back on full bore. So I hope you guys come back and give us a listen on Adam's um, Splendid Sports podcast. And every other week, we'll be on each other's shows like it always is. Anything else you want to add before we end this thing? No, I think that's it. And uh, we'll, 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 I'll see you at the National. I'll, I'll see you in Chicago or Rosemont. <laughs> Can't wait. So stoked. Thank you guys for joining. And until next time, keep collecting. Collect what you love. Don't be influenced by people like us. Just have a good time. Okay. You, Shaka.